Hi guys, welcome to episode 22. Today I want to cover my house music secret weapons. And these are going to be uh, tracks that I've dropped in my sets the most often over the years. The ones that I have the most attachment to and that I find are the most special out of my entire catalog. Uh, first up, I want to cover this record by Little Big B. This is from a Japanese label called Flower Records. And this record is from 2005. This track was kind of broken and featured by the Danny Howells Essential Mix that came out in 2007. If you're not familiar with that mix, check out Danny Howells Essential Mix 2007. It's a two hour session and it's one of the most special uh, mix compilations that I've ever seen. I personally listened to it probably two or 300 times, no exaggeration. And this is uh, what I feel to be the star track of that mix. It introduces around the 25 to 30 minute mark um, Danny mixed into this from uh, one of the DJ tools from the uh, Ibadan, Ibadan label, and uh, he just kind of snuck it in. The, the track that he mixed into was uh, like a percussion tool, and he, he layered this in, and when I first listened to the mix, I couldn't even tell that this was a different track. It, it, it wasn't until I got a hold of the track listing a few weeks later that I was able to decipher like where one track ended and one, where one began. Um, this one here is really awesome. It's the KGO Jazztronic remix. <laughs> It has a progressive kind of build to it where it notches up after each breakdown and it keeps adding synth layers and different uh, very energetic happy synths as it moves through. It's about nine minutes long and I just think it, it's totally special. Um, also on the flip side is a really cool track, not really something for your DJ sets, but um, something that you could listen to at home. It kind of sounds like it's in an aquarium and you know aptly titled Scuba. Uh, so check out Scuba too if you're interested in just like a, a you know, a very unique uh, deep house. It, it has a very Japanese aesthetic to it. Um, it just has that um, uh, characteristic um, Japanese house. I don't know how else to describe it. If you listen to the other tracks on Flower Records, you'll be uh, you'll understand what I mean when I say Japanese house. They have like a very charming, almost like um, elevator or restaurant type aesthetic to them where they're trying to just like kind of like be background music and, and not too uh, not too aggressive or imposing. Uh, but yeah, the, the track KGO, really special. I've played this out in my sets over the years and almost always when I play this, because it, this was released in 2005 and it didn't get a lot of attention, um, somebody will come running up to the booth and ask me what it was or uh, they'll be shazamming it or um, you know, you know, asking me what is that? Asking me for the ID. The the other thing that's interesting about this is when I first acquired this, this was I think I picked it up finally in 2009. It was listed on Discogs, right? And there were only four owners. Two of them were marked as unknown, so I couldn't see who, who they were. So I was really trying to track down a copy, and I went as far as even going on Japanese record websites trying to get a copy, and you just couldn't get one back then. So I started messaging the guys that own them on Discogs, and finally, one of the guys wrote me back after maybe a year of checking in with him. And he's like, hey, I came into a situation where I need some money, and I'll sell you that record. So I think I paid 100 for it, and uh, you know it was uh, uh, well worth it, and I was very happy when it finally came in the mail. A uh, really awesome track, and uh, really special. It's easier to get now. I would say you could get this for anywhere from 50 to 100, and there's usually a, a handful of copies for sale. 
And the reason for that is that there are more Japanese sellers on Discogs now than there used to be. Back then, like getting a record from Japan was, you know, in 2009 was damn near impossible on Discogs, but not anymore. And I also want to point out just how sleek the labels are. It's just a really, really nice aesthetic for the whole vinyl. Uh, so yeah, definitely give this, give this a go. If you want like a nice daytime house track, this will, this will crush it. Crowd love it. <clears throat> Next up is a, another track from the same Danny Howells Essential Mix from 2007. This actually was released in 2006, and this comes in around the one hour mark in that mix. This is Bent's Waiting For You, Danny Howells Remix. The, it has like um, that classic like disco house fusion that Danny likes to do. And I think the most standout portion of this track is the really energetic bass line. The bass line is, it's very clever and it kind of has like a lot of movement to it. has uh, really nice bongos that come in um, maybe halfway through the track and I think they give it a really good dance floor momentum. I played this in a handful of my daytime sets and I, I'm not saying that people came running up to the booth asking what it was but it definitely rocked it and I think for the value for this you can get this maybe I don't know 10 15 bucks on Discogs definitely something that I think will be timeless you could drop this 20 30 years from now it kind of reminds me of that Patrick Cowley track. Um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Oh, Hills of Kathmandu. It has the same type of vibe. So if you like um, house and disco, give this one a go. I consider it a secret weapon because it, you know, it probably has 30 or 40 owners on Discogs at this point, but it definitely crushes it. Next up is a track that some of the older heads, the more seniors that, that follow my channel are probably not going to think is a secret. And it's really not. There's 800 owners. But because this was released in 1997, a lot of like the younger crowds just don't know what this is. Uh, this is Francois K. Time and Space. And it, it is a collaboration with Joe Clausel, who I consider to be a house music hero. This is pretty much damn near a perfect house music track. <music> In terms of energy arrangement when you play this loud at a club it just it goes off so if if you've been lulling people on the dance floor with your set and you feel like you need to kick it into higher gear this track will do it it's like nine or ten minutes and um it's it's just i feel like it's perfectly mastered and has all of the elements that a huge house anthem should have all wrapped into one, one nice little package here um, easy to get it's on wave music not like any kind of exclusive ex exclusivity to this at all um, just a real nice record overall so definitely check this out next up is a sneaky little record that i learned about from watching sasha videos on youtube i believe this is a 2006 or i'm sorry this is a 2008 record and it's uh, by an artist that I'll be honest, I don't know very much about. Uh, it's Tyrell, and the EP is Robofucius. The track that I like on here is called La La La.
reason I like it so much is it has very tight and punchy. It's it's perfect for like a small like boat party or a, a, like a very small room. Um, it just it has like a guitar build up in it that I really enjoy and it just like, kind of like builds and builds and builds and builds and it finally has a crescendo that drops and I just think it totally goes off. Um, not a lot of people are going to know about this but I feel like you'll get a great reaction if you try this out especially at a daytime party. I think this is like daytime all the way. And last up is a track that I consider to be my favorite electronic music track of all time and I don't say that lightly this is Ralph Falcon's The Dig this came out in 2008 and I remember the day that I found it I believe it was a Sunday morning and I was surfing through Juno just you know check checking through just random releases and here comes this Ralph Falcon on Rena on Renaissance and the original mix of this with the first time I sampled it it was like a love it first listen for me I totally went nuts. I remember I called Doombot. I was like, hey, you got to listen to this. He agreed that it was awesome. It has like a nice tribal fusion with um, maybe some house. And it just has big soaring synths in it that uh, I think are like pretty epic and heavenly. It feels like maybe like an ice cave or um, something that's like blue and white. I don't know how else to describe it other than that. But this always really had an emotional pull for me from the very first listen to even now when I listen to it, I, I sort of get choked up a little bit when the synth drops. There's also a Radio Slave remix on, on the B side, and I listen to the Radio Slave just as often, and I play the Radio Slave just as often as the original. Uh, they're both a little bit um, on the darker side. I would say they're both house or maybe tech house for the Radio Slave if, if you wanted to, to get nitpicky with it. But um, yeah, really epic. I've gotten a lot of people coming up asking me what this is, and that goes for the original and the Radio Slave. I find that the they both mix well into Masio Plex Solitary Days because the way those synths are kind of like drawn out and they're I think they're in similar key. I never checked it, but if you want to either uh, you could either start with Masio Plex Solitary Days and go into this or come out of this and go into Solitary Days. Either way, I've gotten really good reactions and I've had people come up to the booth always just checking like, hey, what's what was that? What was that? So. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoy the video and enjoy your summer. Take care.